It's a warm welcome from Her Standards crew. Uh, this is the show that sets the tone for gender equality and women empowerment conversations. We are coming to you from Parking by Radisson Blue in Westlands, Nairobi County. Uh, we are joined by an amazing panel who will introduce themselves in a short while. But before we get to that, we want to introduce the topic of today, which is reproductive and sexual education and health among the youth. These are the young people aged between 18 and 35. This is a very important discussion given what is happening in the country right now. If you want to be part and parcel of this topic, please join us on social media at KTN Home across all platforms or you can hit me up directly at Queen Imbori on Facebook and Instagram as well as Queenie Saina uh, on Twitter. I'm also available as Quintam Bori on LinkedIn. Oh, that's such a mouthful. Anyway, <laughs> yes, so um, ladies, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to Her Standards. Uh, this is the show that has set very high standards. Uh, what we do is we talk about issues that affect women. We give up ourselves a platform to discuss our issues objectively. I'm very excited yes. to have you on the show. We're excited. Not so well. excited about the topic, yeah. given what's happening. Yes. So, but before we get into uh, today's discussion, I'm going to allow each one of you to introduce yourself. Tell us your name, what you do, and uh, probably what excites you today when you woke up today how did you feel what uh, got you out of bed in in high spirits <laughs> well uh first of all queen i think i i think i should start with what excited me today yes, morning yes. when i woke up uh you know we as ladies have our own mood days <laughs> that sometimes you just wake up and you apply makeup nasura <laughs> inakata the face just literally refuses yes. that today the makeup will not settle well so when i saw my makeup had settled well uh -huh. this morning uh -huh. I said, oh yes, this is going to be a beautiful day. It's a day. good sign. It's a good sign. This is a beautiful day. Nice. So I'm in very high spirits today. Mm -hmm. uh, I just to introduce myself. My name is Ruth Ambogo. I come from uh, Vihiga County. You will notice that this is very important because in Vihiga County, of all the titles and uh, accolades I hold, that uh, I am an aspirant for the Vihiga County Woman Representative seat. But before that, I have always been a champion for the youth and women's rights uh, across the country. So basically, I am a youth policy and governance specialist. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I am Lina Anyango. I am an ed educator. I've been teaching for the last like 13 years, and that's my passion. My passion is actually to bridge the gap between girls and boys, especially in the field of STEM. Mm -hmm. And I do so by um, connecting them with mentors, mm -hmm. by uh, presenting to them women who've made it in the field of science, especially in the field of STEM. Yeah. I also motivate and coach fellow teachers mm -hmm. to embrace technology because we know that the future is in technology. Mm -hmm. I, am, I, I am proud to be among the top 50 teachers mm -hmm. in the, for the Global Teacher Prize. That is a prize which our very own Peter Tabichi won in 2019. Oh. Unfortunately, wow. I didn't make it to past top 50, but I am proud for the far I was able to go. To, to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my passion for bridging this gap between the, the girls and the boys in the field of education, mm -hmm. I will do it to my best. Wow, congratulations. I think Thank making you. it to top 50 is not a mean feat. It is yeah. not. And we hope that yeah. probably in future we'll, we'll bring that trophy home. We'll celebrate it here on this show. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Another feature. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. ladies, uh, today we are talking about reproductive and sexual health uh, among the youth. Mm -hmm. What is your understanding of reproductive health? Or is reproductive health in general? And while you're at it, probably if you could just gauge it, how, f how are we doing uh, as a country in Kenya? Are we healthy on a scale of 1 to 10? Where are we? Well, um, yeah. I think the first thing that we need to understand, and I mean, we need to understand when we talk about reproductive health, mm -hmm. is that it is not limited to women. Whenever the topic reproductive mm -hmm. health, health and uh, sexual, anything reproductive, yeah. you mentioned the word reproductive yeah. health, yeah. and the first thing someone is thinking about is, contraceptives for women, for women, yes. women should take care of their, <laughs> their, their, their sexual uh, health, mm -hmm. basically their, you know, hygiene yeah. and sexual mm -hmm. health care, they, they think about gynecologists and yes. they think about women, yes. but, um, and, that's, and that's a good point to start this conversation, that when we talk about reproductive health care, we are talking about the reproductive health care 
of everybody within the society. Mm -hmm. We are also not just mentioning the reproductive health care of just, you know, uh, youth from the age of 18 to above, mm -hmm. but even children, you mm -hmm. know, because at the end of the day, when we're talking about reproductive health care, issues, a lot of issues come in in terms of societal issues around reproductive health care. Yeah. The societal issues that I personally am passionate about mm -hmm. at the moment are yeah. issues such as rape, yeah. issues such as uh, sexual uh, violence, violence yeah. issues such as even gender-based violence because it touches a lot on there's a big link between reproductive health care and gender-based violence mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. one pretty much one and the same thing mm -hmm. so my understanding of reproductive health care is the general reproductive and sexual health care of the society at large from children youth elderly persons with disabilities and everybody within the community and then number two I link it to to the societal issues around us, the stigma, the everything that is going on within the society, mm -hmm. where we don't talk openly about these things, where when we bring up the question of yeah. contraceptives to girls, the church will rise up yes. and tell you, you are trying to introduce immorality. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is that we are a sexually active society. Mm -hmm. Lina, maybe, maybe I can yeah, respond can, with can some respond. statistics. Yes, yes okay. please. Mm -hmm. Did you know that uh, around 12% of girls mm -hmm. and up to around 20% of boys, mm -hmm. by the time they are celebrating their 15th birthday, they've had, had sex. sex. Yeah. Wow. 12% of girls? 12% of girls oh. and 20% of boys. And by the time they are oh. celebrating their 18th birthday, we're talking of 50% girls, 58% boys. boys. It means that we cannot continue to bury our heads in the sand. These, these youngsters are having sex left, right and center. And center. So it's time we talked about it mm -hmm. so that when um, so that they can be in a position to make informed decisions mm -hmm. and to make responsible decisions as far as their sexuality is concerned. Mm -hmm. So I echo what uh, Ruth has said, that it is, it, it is not only about, um, about contraceptives, yeah. but it's everything surrounding our sexual reproductive health and including as well the stigma. Very sad indeed. Uh, I think we'll get to that at a later date. Mm -hmm. But again, ladies, we have been uh, conversant is what, what is happening in news. Yes. Every single day we wake up, we have lost a life, be it a life of a young woman, a life of a young man. What do you think is happening? What's happening in this country? Wow. Yeah. What is happening, yeah. to just go straight to the point, yes. is that we are a society under pressure. Mm -hmm. We are a country under pressure. There is no money. We are just going to go straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Let's not lie to each other that, oh, it's love gone wrong. No, mm -hmm. we just don't have money. There's a lot of pressure going on. People are facing financial pressure. Financial pressure always goes back to translate to family affairs and how family affairs are handled. Mm -hmm. You are in a relationship. The, the man of the house has decided that, for example, uh, he, he's making very little money. He's, going under, he's undergoing stress and pressure. Yeah. Yeah. As a woman, you're the one taking care of the family. And therefore, you're asking this man at the end of the day that, look, I'm looking, I want 200 shillings for food for the next day. Mm -hmm. Because this man is undergoing pressure, he decides, the little money I will get, I'm going to drink that money, mm -hmm. you know? Attend Akunyu Alewe, comes back to the house, mm -hmm. comes back to the house and he's asked, where is food? Did you carry food? Did you bring food back, food home? Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, blows are being exchanged left, right and center. The next thing you know, people are fighting, knives are being mm -hmm. thrown around, yeah. someone dies. Lina, do you think uh, probably uh, the impact of COVID-19 has something to do with it? Do you think so? Of course, of mm. course. Maybe I'll take you back. Mm. Um, being an educator, I yeah. can't fail to talk about students. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you know that early, early this year, yeah. we had a lot of cases of indiscipline in our schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, see, I, I think that resonates so much with what uh, Ruth has said yeah. about the state of mental health in our country. Mm. That is one thing we cannot ignore. And then the other thing is stress management. We are very poor in handling stress. We are very poor in handling our temperaments and our emotional intelligence is very low. Very Those low. are areas we need to work on. Mm. So if, if, if people were, had strong emotional intelligence to understand that when I get into dating, there's a possibility. I will be heartbroken. I will, I will be heartbroken. <laughs> yes. So you, you know the end from the beginning. Mm. That there are two possibilities. I might end up with this person yeah. or we may break up. Mm. So what, if you are prepared for those two eventualities, yeah. then you'll handle the situations more maturely. Mm. But if you are fixated that this thing has to work, that is when we now have the, 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 the cases we've that been having. hearing. That it, you either stay with me or you we are dying. Or we, or we died together. together. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the yeah. former Prime Minister Raila Odinga actually 
say that it, if, if it's not working, mm -hmm. you don't have to live together. You can, go, you, you can don't go separate ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, let me bring you back to... Yeah, he, he said we can live yeah. and live. And live, <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, you yeah. can live, live for living. Yeah, live yeah, for living. Yeah, and and live. live for and going. part ways. Going. Part going. ways. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we so can part ways and still live. And yeah. still live. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, you know, you mentioned something earlier on. Let me just bring you back mm -hmm. about um, the irresponsible habits or rather the sexuality of our youth. Mm -hmm. That by the time uh, these children are graduating right. in mm -hmm. high school, 50% mm -hmm. uh, of men. 50% of girls. 50 percent of girls have are, are, are sexually active. Yes. And the boys? 58. 58%. So mm -hmm. the girls is way higher. Mm -hmm. And this brings me back to this topic of, uh, you know, breaking the silence. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about sexual and reproductive health, especially in the African context, it mm -hmm. becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, Lina as a teacher, mm -hmm. and I know because in school, some of us are parents, mm -hmm. we tend to leave the responsibility, we hand the over teacher. the responsibility to the teachers. Mm -hmm. When do you think it is the right time mm -hmm. to engage your child on this discussion? How do wow. you do it? How often do you do it? And what kind of results do you, should you expect? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. yes, sexual and um, sex education yes. should be taught as soon as the child is able to, to understand himself or herself. Which yeah. is what age? Yeah, which is right from the age of two years. Yeah. Yeah, that is why we are talking of age appropriate oh, sex yes. education. Oh, I yes. don't know if you've ever mm. heard of this song. Yes. Like for the for the kids in kindergarten mm. and lower primary, mm. there's a song for them to teach. What, yeah. what, yeah. what is the song? What is the song? These are my private parts, oh, private, private parts, private parts. parts. So they are told these that these are my, are my private parts. parts. Uh -huh. Nobody should touch Nobody them. Should touch them. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so that song that is appropriate mm. for the child at that age. That okay. anytime somebody touches their private parts, they know what they know to do. They're being violated. They, they, are, they know they're being violated. They yes. know where to report to. Mm -hmm. And they know, I, I think that song is like, if you touch my private parts, I will report you mm. to, my parents. to my parents, to my parents uh. and you'll be arrested mm. and you'll lose your job oh. and you'll become oh, poor. Wow. Yes, it is a very nice song to teach those, those <laughs> young babies about uh, their... Because kids their are security. being raped. Yes. They are, they're mm. being raped, they're mm. being sodomized yeah. and most of them uh, die in silence. Mm. So mm. if they're taught this song early enough, mm. they know that anybody who touches these parts, yeah. that person is intruding into my private space and I should tell mommy so that mommy can... Yeah. can and can take a step. Mm. Now when you go, as they progress, as they, they move to teenage, mm. now they, they'll be taught about puberty, adolescence, what to expect, that these changes they're undergoing, these changes in their body, they're and very normal, normal and yeah. how to handle them. Mm. So when age appropriate sex education starts right from as early as early years. Yeah, my girl in PP1, mm. she knows that song. And she'll come and tell me, mommy, when you're playing, I don't know who touched my bam bam. Mm. So, so they, they take it very seriously. Yeah, yeah they, she'll come and report to me, mm. and that is what we want. Okay. Yes, I think that's that's a good way of including the society to embrace sex education because, as you've said, yeah. it is stigma it's for stigma. parents who talk about sex to their to their children, mm. and it is also it's it's like a taboo maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the things we learned about sex, we learned them elsewhere and mm. not at home. And not at I home. think it's right time mm. that from the home before we learn them from the wrong sources. And, and uh, how about you as a teacher being given the responsibility to teach our children yes. about everything else and also about sexual education? How much time is dedicated to you know, doing that? And yes. is it even enough time? Yes, I, th I think the ministry uh, introduced that. They mm. introduced something we call life skills yeah. education. Yeah. Um, the truth of the matter is that because of our current education system, yeah. which pays um, a lot of attention to grades other than the, the, the other skills, mm -hmm. you see that most teachers don't have time for the life skills. Uh, when I go for my biology lesson, it is 40 minutes, I have a lesson plan, I have objectives to achieve. <laughs> so <laughs> what time do I have to teach, to teach these, people? These are the it's things not, It's not prioritized. No, it is not prioritized. Okay. That's, okay. that's what I can say. But mm. it is there. It's supposed to be there. Mm. Again, the problem is even the teachers are also Africans. They're also Kenyans. Mm. They're also afraid <laughs> of speaking about, the, about these things. Because they are parents at home. They, they are also parents at home. At home. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know whether you heard about um, this girl who committed suicide. 
because of being triad shame. Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, to yes, somewhere in yes, Nandi. Yes, 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 yes. And I think that was instigated by the teacher, the mm. way the teacher handled that case. Mm. So you cannot actually trust teachers 100% mm. to handle everything about um, sex education mm. because they are still in the same community that we are in. They still have those stigma and taboos and everything. Yeah. But now, as a biology teacher in mm. my syllabus, I have some area where I teach about <laughs> reproduction. <laughs> but not every day. Not every not day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Not you treat every it day. as a subject. As a subject, as an examinable subject. Yeah. You know, that is so interesting mm. because, uh, uh, Ruth, you know, if you move away from uh, introducing sexuality education from a tender age, and now we have children who are now grown and they're teenagers, and they are twins and they are semi-adults. Uh, I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding the reproduct access to reproductive information for young people because uh, the opponents of the debate, they, they assume that it's like promoting promiscuity yes, and responsibility. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think it is fine for parents? Do you think it's fine for parents to introduce like reproductive health? Conversations, conversations to, to the, the table the, early, to especially the children. daughters. Yes, I will tell you from my own personal experience. Mm. I am one person who had the luxury of growing up with my grandmother from the age of three years to eight years. Mm -hmm. Then my mom took care of me. My mom gave birth to me when she was still in school yeah. mm. at the age of 23. Mm -hmm. So that alone should tell you something. Mm -hmm. She was still in campus yes. at the age of 23, 24. Mm. Then she couldn't uh, sustain taking care of me and going to school. She took me to my grandma at the age of three months to eight years. Mm -hmm. Of course, my grandmother at age of three years to eight, 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 uh, three years, to, I mean, three months to eight years could not tell me much about, for her, she lives in the taboo, taboo Era. days, yeah? Yes. So I understand her. Mm -hmm. But my grandmother is quite liberal. She talks about these things. She now, I think, now talks about them. She's mm -hmm. almost approaching 90. Then from the age of uh, eight years to, I think, when I was 14, I was with my mother. Can I tell you, then after that I went to high school, away from my mom, then university. I have never, and sorry, she might watch this, mm -hmm. never had a conversation with my mother mm -hmm. about reproductive health care. My mother has never sat me down <laughs> to tell me, my daughter, there is contraceptives. Yes. These are the contraceptives that you use. <laughs> These are the, this is how it is done. She has never... What do you think is the appropriate age to introduce the topic about contracep contracep contraceptives? When these girls are in high school, the number of girls who get pregnant immediately after high school is very high. There are those who get pregnant when they're still in high school, which is not as huge of a number as the ones who get pregnant in college, in campuses, in all these tertiary institutions, mm -hmm. because they lack that knowledge. So when they're still in high school, part of that biology course and by the way, it shouldn't even be part of the biology yeah, course yeah. because we have mixed schools, so yes. there can be stigma. Mm. There should be a special course mm -hmm. where girls, it, it shouldn't even be examinable. Mm. Just have a special course, the same way we have a course in, uh, in universities mm. on HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Just have a special course on reproductive health care. Teach them these things when they are still in high school mm. because they get out there and they get excited when they are out of university. Mm. They get excited, I mean, out of high school. Mm. And things happen. Yeah. These are conversations that we need to we have. Need to have them. It's yes. a good point to take a break. I mean, yes. we're going to come back in a short while. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, we are talking about reproductive and sexual health care for young people. Heated, deba heated debate, heated discussion, trying to figure out what is right for our children given what is happening in the current environment. This is a conversation that you need to be part of. And you can find us on social media at KTN Home across all platforms or you can talk to me directly at Queen Imbori on Facebook, Instagram and Queen Isaina on Twitter. You can also connect with me at Queen Tambori on LinkedIn. I'll be glad to respond and uh, give you feedback as much as I can. We want to take a short break and when we come back we will look at some of the impacts of not having this discussion with your children. How about the sexual consent? What does it involve? And much more. Please do not go away. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 